There are a lot of things that don't seem very fair as we grow a little older. And one of the things is losing weight after menopause. It's not fair, but it's reality. And I want to talk to you today about how you can do something very positive to make it possible to lose weight, still dealing with the hormonal changes that we go through. Now, my name is Margaret Manning. I'm with 60 and Me, and I want to welcome you here today. There's so much to talk about on this subject. It's a really important one. Uh, weight in our 60s is more about health than it is about appearance, I think. So I want to talk to you about how to get a healthier lifestyle in place so that you can lose some weight after menopause and uh, make the most of this incredible time in your life. Now, our show today is brought to you by International Living. International Living is a company that helps people to make plans about retiring overseas. Now, it may be something that you're considering. Uh, it may be something that you've already done, but they've got some wonderful resources that you can refer to. If you go up to their website, internationalliving.com slash 60 and me, you will find some reports there that they will send to you that will help you to make the decisions that you need to ask the questions in order to make the decisions. So thank you to International Living. Now, let's talk about uh, losing weight. <laughs> you know, um, I, I think that a lot of people um, get kind of obsessed about this because there's so many things that are going on in your body as you get older. You know, physical things, there's the things, the wrinkles, the, 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 the belly, the, all the things that you um, maybe weren't expecting, the, the, the changes to your skin, the inner changes, the, the things to your self-perception, your view of beauty, how you view yourself in this, um, in this transition period. And I think that we all um, establish certain eating habits throughout our life that we know work for us. I mean, we're here, we're 65, 70 years old, and we're, we've done pretty well to stay healthy, hopefully. There's some people, and I, you know, with all my heart, I understand and respect those people that have got illnesses and um, mobility issues. But for the most part, we get into habits with our eating um, after menopause that we, you know, we hope work for us. I mean, for example, I, my kids always say to me, like, I, I eat like a bird. I mean, I don't eat very much. I don't eat big quantities of food. I even eat on small plates because that's just, I, I don't feel like eating a lot more. But uh, I still gain weight. Well, actually, I don't gain it as much as I sustain it. I haven't lost a lot of weight in, in a long time. I'm kind of balanced out. So, you know, even though I eat very, very um, uh, little food, I, I probably eat more dairy than I should. I mean, I can look at certain aspects of the diet and say, oh, that's, you know, a shortcoming or an area that I could improve. But for the most part, we, we struggle um, with losing weight, uh, partly because we're just not um, looking at the whole nutritional picture to, in one in one way, in one place. So I want to share with you some ways that you can do this. Now, exercise. Let's talk about exercise. Everyone's body is different, of course, and uh, an exercise for one person can work. Your metabolism can respond to certain kinds of exercise and other people can knock themselves out with, you know, cardio and weightlifting and whatever else and, um, you know, really uh, not lose or, or improve their weight. And I think that um, it, the, I hate to say this in such a, de not a negative way, but in a way that's so important is that you've got to take exercising seriously as you get older. You know, when you're younger, you can kind of go to the gym and hang out and do a few exercises and you've, you know, it, it, your, your blood starts to flow and your heart rate is up and it's all good. But when you get older, you do have to work it. Now, one thing is you don't have to actually do you know, heavy um, like cardio weights and, and, and elliptical and, and bikes and machines. You can do things like yoga. Now, I know this is going to sound counterintuitive because yoga doesn't involve a lot of, you know, uh, heart rate raising. It's, it's more to do with stretching, breathing, relaxing into parts of the body and getting poses that do um, massage your internal organs and, um, you know, and, and, and lubricate your joints. And these are things then that empower you to do some of the other more cardio exercise. So if you're going to do yoga, combine it with something else. Now, we have um, some yoga videos at 60 and Me, which I want to mention because they are free of charge on YouTube. You can watch our videos with Kat Kabira, who's a fabulous teacher. We recorded all of these uh, videos in Bali, where she is a teacher well-known teacher, very, very um, uh, good, good um, for, with, with, with older people. She's worked with older adults a lot of her life as a teacher. So we have three different um, programs. We've got Gentle Yoga Flows, which is a series of um, yoga movements, which really follows the other two, which is Gentle Yoga to start with. That's your beginning one. 
and then also chair yoga. So if you've got any kind of mobility issue, you can actually uh, look at the chair yoga. And that is a really good one. I've tried that myself. And it's not um, it's not easy. I mean, it really is good, a good workout. So these if you want to buy the DVDs, you can do that. But if you want to look at them online, they're they're free. So I mentioned yoga, though, because if you are stiff in the morning or you just, um, you know, you've got an achy back or you're just not limber, then you're unlikely to do the next thing that I'm going to talk to, to you about, which is walk, but walk fast. You know, I mean, it's one thing to go for a walk <laughs> and people say this, oh, I walk, I go for a walk. And, and you know, like I'm, I'm the same. I go for a walk and I walk around the house and I walk around the park and the lake. But it's not walking. Walking is when you feel your heart rate. If you can still talk when you're walking, you're probably walking too slow. You want to keep going and so that your heart rate gets uh, enhanced and you are, you know, you're really moving. Well, pick up the pace. And then the next thing is to add some uh, sessions of intense exercise. So walking 10,000 steps a day is great. That's perfect, a perfect place to start. But if you're going to lose weight after menopause in, as you get older, you're going to have to include in your exercise regime some weightlifting, some bike riding, something that gets you really, really pumping the blood through your body and get your heart rate up. Because the thing about weight loss is that you need muscle. And you're not going to get muscle from doing uh, just walking by itself or just uh, doing something yoga or Pilates. You need to do something that involves weightlifting uh, or something that involves, you know, running and getting the heart rate up. That's where you build your muscle. So include cardio and weightlifting and, um, you know, that make it part of your whole day. Start slow. You don't have to, you know, go running and doing, you know, 20 minutes on, a, on an elliptical bike right away. Just start slow. Do one minute a day. One minute, one day, next day do two minutes, three minutes. At the end of the month, you're doing 30 minutes. And that's, well, 15, 20 minutes is really all that you need to think about in a session. So that's, I think, the important thing. You can lose weight um, in, in those two different ways. One is by doing something like yoga where you're, you're not stiff and sore. And then the other is to take that more um, agile and uh, exercise body and go out and do some physical, um, some cardio or something that's weightlifting, heavy duty. Cardio to get your hum heart pumping, yoga to keep you flexible. So I hope this has been helpful for you. I mean, I, I do actually try myself to do this because I know, as I said at the beginning, it's not all about looks. I mean, I do, of course, I like my clothes to wear, to fit a little better, be able to wear some of those things I've bought that I said I would wear when I lost 10 pounds, you know, that experience. But anyway, the more important thing is to be healthy. If you're in your 60s and 70s, you've done great. You're doing okay. Just keep going, but do it in a way that you are, you know, getting the whole spectrum. Menopause can, you know, last for many, many years after you've actually stopped uh, your period. And it's actually not um, something that you can switch on and off. These hormones continue into your 60s and, and sometimes later. And then there's the whole postmenopausal uh, reduction, reduction in estrogen and other uh, hormones from menopause that create all their own little wonders um, to deal with. So I hope that's been a, a useful conversation. But what do you do to stay in shape in your 60s and 70s? What do you do? Do you do that combination of flexibility and um, cardio? What, what's your plan? What, what, what do you do? Dancing? some kind of exercise that involves that kind of movement. Really would be interested in what you've done and what you have found to be successful. Do you agree that losing weight after 60 really requires you to push it? <laughs> Just a little bit more than maybe you have been. I know it's hard. I really do. I totally get it. And I, I'm not preaching. I'm just suggesting. And, then, and I'm listening to my own words from myself. It's all part of the plan. So leave a note before how you stay in shape in your 60s. I'd really like to know in 70s and 80s, whatever you're doing, please tell us and just stay well, stay healthy, stay positive. That's the most important thing. And have a really, really wonderful day, everybody. Bye-bye for now.